again, your life will never remain the same. Now, quickly, let me give you a short word of charge from the book of Proverbs, chapter 25. It is that scripture from whence the theme for this meeting is drawn. The book of Proverbs, chapter 25. Now, my verse of emphasis is verse 4. It says, take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the final. The logic behind the scripture is pretty straightforward. And I, I know that maybe by now you have looked at all the possible interpretations to the things that go on when these kinds of procedure is um, embarked upon. Um, but there is a prayer that I want us to pray tonight. And uh, it is the prayer of Solomon in this scripture. He says, take away the dross from the silver and there 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 shall come forth a vessel for the finer when you look on the silver that is just recently uh, mined the, the silver that was just gotten from the mining site uh, it, there's nothing that what but what you see what your eyes see first is the dross what your eyes see first is the rubbish what your eyes see first is the mud that's the first thing that comes to sight and the scripture is saying if we take away the dross then the finer shall have a vessel to work with when we look on the silver that was just mined the first thing we see is nothing pleasant but when we take away the dross the finer the skilled man will have what to work with it's like, it's, it paints to me a picture of a young lady who, when you look upon her, that doesn't seem like anything interesting is going on with this life. Maybe your life has been such a life that is filled with contradictions. A lot of stories, baggage that you have carried for years and years. And because of these kinds of things, it has even made it difficult for you to press into God. Maybe you have gotten to that state in your life where the only thing that you are praying for is, let me make heaven. Because the, reason, the point I have gotten to in my life, I'm not sure that God can do anything with me. That's a life that is clothed, that is covered with dross. It's a life covered with dross. But the prayer that we are going to pray to the final this evening is take away the dross. Take away the dross so that there can be a vessel that you can use. Because what makes, what makes silver valuable is what is intrinsic to it. What it is its nature, right? But the dross can cover it so badly that it is mistaken for something else. But when the, the, the finer goes to work, the first thing he begins to do is to take away the dross. While I prayed this morning, the Lord brought it to my spirit that there are a lot of destinies here that he is able to forge. He is able to, 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 to design according to pattern. But we need to cry to the Lord and say, take away the dross. You see, the dross can, can confidently, conveniently cover the silver so much that nobody knows the value of what is behind it. Even the person in, in, in question. You may have so much that ha you have carried all the years. And you have come to the point that it is, you know, or you have thought that God cannot use me. The kinds of people that God uses are, is not, it's not me. It's definitely not me. There is something that God can do 
he can bring up a vessel for the final. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2, um, let me show you the thought of the Apostle Paul. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, um, let me read from verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he, the man, shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared for every good work. So within the context of Second Timothy chapter 2, there is something that the apostle Paul was referring to when he called, when he, when he called it these. If a man shall purge himself from these. Now, there are these these, there are these these things that, that are encumbrances, they are coverings, and they are sufficient enough to mask out, to, to blow the thing that is the light that the great lighter of men has lit up. So that a person can exist and there are so much potentials intrinsic to her, but there is so much covering. It is these things. It is what um, Proverbs calls the dross. And as long as those things remain, they, they form hindrances. That it's not as if God cannot use or God does not want to use, but there is until there is a taking away, there will be no vessel that the final can use. Now, in the next five minutes, I'd like us to be upstanding, and I'd like us to speak to the Lord that this weekend, this evening, and tomorrow. You see, you know what constitutes the draws. You know what constitutes the distance as it is touching my reality, as it is touching my life. And my prayer is a sincere one. Take away the draws. Take away the draws. You see, the thing with, with these kinds of realities is that they are not hidden. They are obvious. It, it's the first thing you see. That if, if any time I appear before his majesty, that's the first thing that comes to sight. It's the first thing. Can you bring it under the focus of your light and burn it out? Take away the dross. Take away the dross. Take away the dross. So that you can have a vessel that you can mold. Yes. Come on. For in the days that we are in, Jesus said that the, lab the, the, the harvest is ripe, the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into his vineyard. How is it the case that he is in need of laborers? Yet, yet, there is a scarcity of them. How will he send them into his vineyard? What are the things that form encumbrances? What are the things that form resistances to the light that shines and burns? Take away the dross. It's, it's, it's the first layer of our, of our engagements this evening. Take away the dross. Take away the dross. Take away the dross. Yes, I may not know. I may not know. I may not know. It may, it may just be there, but, and I may not know. But it is the first thing that comes to sight when I appear before His Majesty. The Bible speaks of Isaiah. That all along, he thought that he was speaking for the Lord. And when he appeared before the luminescence of His Majesty, when the light of the glory of God shone through his being, he saw where his infirmities lay. He said, Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. It's the first thing that comes to sight. May I appear before the great one even tonight. Take away the dross. I live as a balakalo, se prenavanas to belai. 
Jabole frante kabapona. I prefer sope pate fane kabola vanes. Sai pole vele prante keli. Apora sai vele pana. A komporo selina maka. Jesus. Take away the dross. Take away the dross. Saila. Saila balanes. Kabore Saila Bakane Vastobalanes. I have come before the focus of your light. Lord, during the course of this conference, uh, let your light focus on my essence. Take away the dross. If there is anything that stands uh, as, as a hindrance from you using me. For so long I've been praying. I've been trusting you. And yet it seems as if nothing is moving. It seems as if I have given my, myself the conclusion. I am not in the category of people that God can use. <laughs> but then there is a vessel that the fine can use. But he must first take away the dross. Take away the dross. Aila Kabona. Kailo Sapona Betis. Pronto Sapo Febrante Kabo Valanes. Brake Sapo Vela Kabo Masailas. A Prante Sevila Caboreta Zapona Canazes. Thank you. Woo. Saile brasa pafanai, kabo velanas taluna. I choose to go along with you, and I choose to go along with you. I choose to go. I choose to go along with you. I choose to go. I choose to go. I love us up on with you. Say, I choose to go, Lord. I choose to go. Farabasai le preta cabo. with you. Say, I choose to go. I choose to go along with you. I choose to go. I choose to go. Kappa Bella Bonai. With you. I choose to go. I choose to go. Oh, Lord, I choose to go. I can't be lost. I 